993 forecast first. Sponsored by Mattex Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical. It is Saturday morning, and we've got lots of sunshine out there to start our day. It is cold, though. You'll need a jacket and a sweatshirt out the door. Temperature at 46 here. We got down into the 30s, had some frost in spots. Not a concern anymore. Sunshine helping to melt any of that frost that you may have seen away here. Still, though, today won't get all that warm with the sunshine. That's because some changes are coming here. Already starting to see some cloud cover sneak on. And that's ahead of some rain showers that arrive into this afternoon. That means temperatures only getting into the upper 50s, maybe low 60s in a few spots. Very unseasonably cool for the day with a chance for some heavier rain rolling in by tonight. We also think there may be a couple more opportunities for some frost as well as cooler weather into next week. I'll have the details on that and more as the morning show starts right now. It was a little bit scary. It was a little bit alarming. A chase that went speeding through Danville ended in a crash. What's first responders found in that car? Plus, people in rural communities are sometimes several miles away from a vaccine clinic. What's the National Guard is doing in one community so they don't have to travel far for their dose? And fire destroyed a bar. What two people went in afterwards and stole? You're watching your local news leader. This is The Morning Show on WCIA 3 News. Thanks for joining us this Saturday morning. I'm Jamie Mays. Here's a look at today's top stories. A chase in Danville ended in a crash, but flames weren't the only thing first responders found. This happened at Main and Buchanan Streets. Danville police say a bomb was found. A robot took out two items from the crashed car. One looked to be a suitcase. The bomb squad brought them to a secure location. Police say they did two controlled detonations and found one bomb. This stem from, stemmed from a car crash earlier yesterday afternoon. A black car was seen driving down the road with multiple police cars following. The car then crashed in front of a church. The suspect was taken to a hospital. No one else was reported hurt, but witnesses say it was unnerving to see. It was very scary. I don't know if it was just because I've had a stressful day at work, but um, it was a little bit scary. It was a little bit alarming. Officers didn't say why there was a bomb in the suspect's car or how they knew there was one in there. And we have new information about an officer involved in a shooting in Tilton Wednesday. State police tell us the officer was not shot. Only the suspects both went to the hospital. Few details have been released about what happened. We reached out to the mayor who says village officers do not have dash or body camera recordings of the shooting. And the National Guard helped people get vaccinated in Decatur. This was a mobile vaccination unit, one of many across the state. The National Guard brought 600 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. It's part of the state's goal to get the vaccine to people in more rural communities. I think we probably have a variety of people here today, but I can definitely say that the health department and our partners in the community have made an effort to ensure that those in the rural populations are being served. Just over 29% of the Macon County population is fully vaccinated. Pyatt and Sangamon counties are the only ones surrounding Macon that are over 30%. It is 8 or 3 time for Weather on the Threes. We're looking at our camera network this morning, seeing lots of sunshine in most spots out there. Mattoon has a little bit of cloud cover. Springfield also seeing more cloud cover. Still, many spots in east central Illinois starting the day with lots of sunshine out there. Temperatures have bumped up into the 40s area wide. Many spots along and north of Interstate 74 dropped down into the 30s this morning, got to 36 in Urbana. Even some low to middle 30s in parts of Iroquois, Ford, and Livingston County. There was that frost advisory this morning. That is no longer in effect. As we go through the day today, temperatures will be climbing into the upper 50s and maybe low 60s in a few spots out there. If you've got to do yard work this morning, the best time to do it. Rain showers will approach the area as early as 2 o'clock. Most of us probably waiting closer to the supper time, though. But cloud cover will continue to filter on in as we go through the afternoon hours. Here's the highs on the board. I've got Tolono up to 62. Gibson City sitting at 60 for a high today. Look for 57 in Pena and in Hillsborough. 57 in Ramsey. 57 also in Stewardson. 59 in Mattoon and 
and in Toledo, Arcola gets up to 60. It will be a little cooler to the south and western parts of central Illinois as cloud cover moves on in a bit early. Here we are by lunchtime. Notice the clouds are filling on in by 3 o'clock, starting to see some light showers out there. And then by tonight, then, those rain showers will pick up. Some spots of moderate rainfall, maybe a few rumbles of thunder on the table. We'll talk more about the rain tonight, the chance for some thunder, and what comes in the backside of the system coming up at 813. Jamie? Thanks, Jacob. And severe weather once again rolled through central Illinois. We showed you tornado damage in Christian County, but high winds also did some damage in Vermilion County. This is four miles north of Fairmont. Neighbors say it looks like a path of damage where the tops of trees were twisted off. One tree limb went through the roof of a house and then punched through a wall. The wind caused some major problems. It blew out the back windows and the front window that's right out there, and uh, I guess that made enough suction that I didn't even know if the roof was going to stay on at, the, at one moment. We were trying to run down the stairs from the upstairs, and it just, it was very, very windy. The National Weather Service has not confirmed a tornado in that area. And several bars across Christian County were broken into over the past couple of weeks. Surveillance video may help help catch the crooks. WCI3's Cole Hankey has more. On April 27th, a group broke into Garage 2 Tavern in Edinburgh. Check out this video. They raided the bar, stealing money from the video gambling machines, safes, and the cash register. Christy Van Dorn and her husband opened the bar two years ago. All the poker machines were completely demolished. Um, they had broken into the, um, the machine that dispenses the money, and they had gotten into our dartboard. Our cash register was thrown onto the floor. The Garage Tavern joined a list of bars across Christian County and Sangamon County that were broken into recently. Christian County Sheriff Bruce Kettlecamp has reason to believe that they're all connected. We believe the same crowbar, the same type of crowbar with the same uh, paint that was left uh, where they pried to get into the, to the uh, building. Uh, we're working closely with the Illinois State Police Crime Lab and uh, we're hoping to uh, be able to come up with some physical evidence. That list of bars includes Copperheads in Pawnee. The bar burned down in the fire that took out a quarter of the town square last month. The cleanup officially started today, but before the crews could get there, somebody went through and cleaned out the video gaming machines and an ATM. When Van Dorn heard the crimes could be linked, it made it hurt that much more. It, it just creeps you out to know that they're in there and they're just kind of taking advantage of you. Um, my husband was really heartbroken from it because we've only had the business for two years and, and we've put a lot into it. For right now, Sheriff Kettlecamp is telling bar owners to increase security at their locations because he does think they will try and strike again. And the Clinton Police Department wants to know if you have a home security camera. They're trying to create a database of addresses with the systems. The police chief says they've had two cars stolen in the last two weeks. They were unlocked with keys inside. While they're hoping people will protect their property by locking doors, the fitted footage could help them solve crime. Those individuals have been caught on various ring cameras or home security systems and been able to help us uh, resolve the case and make an arrest. So what we see that, that um, home security systems, home camera systems are becoming an increasing thing in our investigations. Police say they won't have access to your camera system without your consent. And a woman in Muhammad is honoring the passion of a family member who died. Christine Cunnington Johnson was diagnosed with brain cancer in 2017. She died in 2019. When she was battling cancer, Christine and her husband hosted an open house to benefit the Carl Auxiliary Guest House in Urbana. Now, her sister is helping to honor her passion for that cause. During the community garage sales in Muhammad, she's selling some of Christine's clothes, jewelry, and other belongings. A portion of each cell goes to the Carl Auxiliary Guest House. I just want to keep my beautiful sister's spirit alive. She was so generous and so compassionate. And this, the Carl Auxiliary Guest House was kind of her, was something that, that she was able to focus on during her treatment in difficult days. 
She will be selling items at the garage sale today from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And a woman in central Illinois is making history, how she's serving the country while setting an example for the next generation up next. A woman in central Illinois became one of the first female Marines in San Diego County. Emma Zimmer will be part of the first female and male integrated company. She finished the Crucible, a 54-hour-long culminating event. Each recruit then receives their eagle, globe, and anchor emblem and gets called a Marine for the first time. Zimmer was a 2020 graduate from Tuscola Schools. One of her Champagne recruiters says she's setting an example for young women locally. Marine Corps obviously is known for being the best of the best. Um, so having females b joining our organization and becoming a part of that team and earning that title Marine, I think just goes to show um, that if you really put your mind to it, um, you can do it. Zimmer will spend two weeks in what's known as restricted movements and then will complete 13 weeks of recruit training. And Sangamon County Fair officials are announcing some new additions to the grandstand lineup. Nellie will headline the grandstand on June 17th. Country singer Riley Green will perform on June 18th. There will also be a truck and tractor pool and a demo derby as well as the Sangamon County Fair Queen pageant. The fair is scheduled for June 16th to the 20th. And Georgetown Fair officials have also announced the headliner of this year's festival. Tracy Lawrence will take the stage along with the Feudin Hill Billies. They'll perform on August 13th. Tickets are now on sale on the fair's website. We have a link on WCIA.com. The Georgetown Fair is scheduled for August 7th to the 14th. It is 8.13. We're looking outside in Mattoon right now. A great sunny start to the day. A bit chilly, though. Those temperatures down into the 40s this morning right now. We'll be seeing them climb later on and getting into the 50s and 60s in most spots. We're already seeing some cloud cover fill on in here. That's going to continue through the late morning and afternoon hours here as the system approaches. The rain, though, should hold off until 2 o'clock. Get outside, do your yard work, your chores outdoors this morning into the early afternoon because once the rain starts, it doesn't stop through much of the day tonight uh, into Sunday, that is. Here we go as we look at future track. We'll time out the chance for rain for you. Doing a great job showing where that cloud cover is this morning. Notice by lunchtime here, looking at a partly to mostly cloudy sky 
maybe a stray sprinkle. I'm optimistic most of the chance for rain showers will hold off until after 2 o'clock. Here we are, 3 o'clock this afternoon, seeing some light rain and sprinkles out there. And once that happens, the chance for rain will continue to go up. By supper time, we're seeing widespread rain showers, light in nature. Some sprinkles and some light rain out there, maybe even a drizzle at spots here. The heavy rain will come after sunset tonight. Here we are, 9 o'clock. We'll start to see some of these pockets of yellow and orange, indicating heavier rain showers pushing on in. That continues overnight tonight and then into tomorrow morning. Still seeing a lot of that rain focused along and north of Interstate 72. Probably more dry than not down by Interstate 70. But then by early tomorrow morning, we'll see a line of showers, maybe a few embedded thunderstorms. Not expecting severe weather with this, but that will roll on through, bringing heavy rain across the region as it pushes out. Sunday then, looking at light rain showers and windy weather on the backside here. Uh, before finally Sunday night, the clouds start to exit the region. Here's a quick check, Jamie, at how much rain we expect. Areas that have that heavy rain, Jamie, north of 72, have the best chance to see one to two inches of rain. There will be some spots that end up seeing less. Unfortunately, Jamie, I don't have any 75 and sunshine of the seven day forecast, though. I think it's a little too cold and chilly for late May. I, I would agree with you here. Uh, the thing to note is that, interestingly enough, there's a chance that could mix in some wet snowflakes up north by Chicago tonight. Snow. Snow, yeah, we're talking about that again. Not in our area. Again, okay. don't think that's in our area. Just to our north. Too close for comfort, though. All right, thanks, Jacob. A new store opened in Champaign. What the business is giving some of the very first customers to their doors today. Up next. The news continues here on The Morning Show, your local news leader. Looking for something to do this weekend? Here is a look at upcoming events around central Illinois. After shutting its doors over a year ago, the Champaign County History Museum will be reopening with new exhibits. You'll finally get to see the new Illinois Traction System exhibit. It features a wall of history about the system's founder and streetcar memorabilia. 
Two more exhibits are also new. If you'd like to visit, it's encouraged you register first. You can stop by anytime from 10 to 5 today. And you get the chance to meet some baby reindeer early this year. For the first time ever, Hardy's Reindeer Ranch in Rance Hall will open early for the late spring and early summer season. You can stop by anytime today from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. to get the chance to see their three new babies. They are also offering tractor rides, a paint Ball gallery and pedal car races. They will be open through June 28th. And Urbana High School Theater will be putting on a show tonight called Songs for a New World. It is about a group of characters who each have to make a life changing decision. The show is recommended for ages middle school and up. You must buy a ticket and you can watch it virtually. It is from 7 to 8. And Burlington opened its doors for off of North Prospect and Champaign. If you're unfamiliar, Burlington offers almost anything. The doors open at 8 after a ribbon cutting. Customers will receive a Burlington umbrella while supplies last. The opening in Champaign brings the total number of stores in the state to 36. And more movies are heading to theaters and streaming services. Dean Richards has the latest in entertainment. Thank you for bidding on me in the auction. I am so flattered that somebody your age would be a fan of my work. I don't know who the hell you are. New this weekend is the sweet comedy here today, starring Billy Crystal and Tiffany Haddish. In it, he's a veteran comedy writer who becomes unlikely friends with a rough-around-the-edges street singer. He's the elder on a staff of comedy writers on a Saturday Night Live type of show. Only he's showing signs of memory loss that's only getting worse. She helps him breathe life into every minute with every one who means something to him. Co-written and also directed by Crystal, I'm reminded why he's always been one of the best working comedy actors around. Tiffany Haddish here really spreads her wings, showing much more than the over-the-top Tiffany that we know from her stand-up. This is a sweet, funny pairing with the subject matter delicately handled that makes the difficult subject of dementia and Alzheimer's a little easier to take. It's a Dean's List B+, plus only in theaters. For sci-fi fans, there's the new superhero series on Netflix, Jupiter's Legacy. It's the latest comic book adaptation to move to a streaming service with an eight-episode first season following the offspring of a group of old-school superheroes trying to live up to their parents' high standards set since the 1930s. Josh Dumal, Ben Daniels, and Leslie Bibstar. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new edition. H. In Wrath of Men, Jason Statham is an armored truck driver with some special skills that has his co-workers wondering who he is and from where he's come. As is the case with most movies like this, it's all about revenge. And this one dishes it out with a story that's stronger in its action and effects than it is in its plot line. I give it a Dean's List C. It's exclusively in theaters. documentaries this week, there's The Boy from Medellin, an intimate and revealing look at one of the biggest international superstars of our time, Colombian singer Jay Balvin. The film follows the Grammy winner as he prepares for the biggest concert of his life, while the streets of his hometown explode with political unrest. See it on Amazon Prime Video. And finally, for the Mother's Day weekend. Hundreds of movies about moms, comedies, dramas, and also musicals. Among the most popular for many people is the first Mamma Mia movie from 2008 with Meryl Streep, Amanda Seyfried, Colin Firth, Pierce Brosnan, and many more. As always, you can get my weekend movie reviews and home video picks sent right to your phones every Friday just by texting the word Dean to 97999. Hope you have a great Mother's Day weekend. In Chicago, I'm Dean Richards. It is 823. Here's a look outside in Charleston, getting some good sunshine in spots here. Where we're seeing the sun, it will not last long. Temperatures this morning in the 40s. We do climb up into the 50s and 60s out there. The winds are starting calm today. If you're wanting to head to the park, I tell you what, the time to do that going to be this morning into the early afternoon. Rain showers expected as early as 2 o'clock. The more widespread rain that will hold off till supper time into the evening hours. And tonight will then bring some heavier rain into the region. Here's highs across the region. I've got Muhammad, 59. 
59, 59 in Hayworth, Elkhart at 57. As we go through the day, then we think we'll get to upper 50s and low 60s. Clouds continue to increase, rain showers into the afternoon, south and east winds 5 to 15 miles an hour. Tonight, then down to 44, rain showers with some heavy rain possible. Some thunder may also mix on in, not expecting any severe weather. Here's your Mother's Day forecast 53. The rain will be heavy early. The early morning could bring a round of rain and storms. No severe weather. We're drying out with cloudier and cooler weather across central Illinois. Those north winds will be a bit breezy tonight and tomorrow, turning to the north 10 to 25 miles an hour. Jamie, not an ideal day for Mother's Day across central Illinois. I know my mom's watching, though, and she did say she's not mad at me. She's just a little unhappy, I guess. About the weather? Yeah, for Mother's Day. I'm, <laughs> she'd love to spend it outside. Most Mother's Days around here, usually fairly mild out. This year, not the case. And go big or go home seems to be the mantra for Mother's Day this year. The National Retail Federation says Americans plan to spend more than $28 billion on mom. That's up $1.4 billion from last year. Jewelry and electronics lead the gift-giving agenda, and about half of people say they will go out for brunch or another outing. What's your plan for Mother's Day? Well, I'll be here with you and uh, working all day. We actually had our Mother's Day celebration on Friday. My brother was in town from Nebraska with his wife, and so we got to eat dinner, and uh, so it was a good time. What about you? Um, we have... <laughs> got you back. You yeah, well, I'm here. I'm here as well for Mother's Day, but um, so we have dinner, and then we always give our mom flowers, and then this year, I actually go, get to go home for Mother's Day the next weekend, so I'm excited about that. We're doing a Mother's Day, post-Mother's Day retreat. Yeah, I think the important thing is, is even if you can't celebrate on Mother's Day, you still celebrate at some point close and get away with it. Yeah, my mom takes Mother's Day very seriously. Oh, my mom too. <laughs> my dad as well. Right for the same. All right, and there's a lot to learn about owning your own business, how some students are figuring out what it takes to start and grow one of their own up next. In downtown Clinton, a group of students from different high schools are working on projects. It's called Rosie's Resale. So Rosie's Resale is an online thrifting and resale shop. While Emma Cook sifts through donated clothes, 
Marina Roman is getting her food license in order so she can start baking. So my cupcakes are all homemade. My business name is Flights and Delights because when I get older, I do want to be a pilot, so I thought that I would incorporate that into my business. It's not your typical high school elective. These students are part of the Midland Institute for Entrepreneurship CEO program. For a couple of credit hours, these juniors and seniors are not only learning to run their own businesses. Facilitator Melanie Brown says they're doing it for real. One student has applied for an LLC and the other four are currently sole proprietors. Um, we have a conversation with the parents at the very beginning of the school year and we say this is a safe place where we are going to coach them, mentor them all the way through the start of launching their own individual business. Just ask Reese Samsmore. The interior remodeling business he created for the program is far more than a school project. It's his future. I don't plan on like going to like a four-year college. I plan on doing like a trade school and then continuing the business after high school. As a non-traditional program aimed at teaching students about the world of business, guest speakers, including our very own Tim Sinclair, are invited to come in and share their stories. Site visits and lectures encourage networking between the students and community leaders. There's an emphasis on learning both soft and hard skills, all of which help students prepare pitches to real bankers and investors. One of the goals of the CEO program is to teach students life skills. We've talked about dinner etiquette. We have talked about interview skills, writing resumes. Oh, I've learned so much. I wanted to learn more about the businesses around me and just how to create my own business. And I've really learned a lot. It is 8.33. Here's a look outside in Springfield. Some more clouds in place here. Still some pockets of blue sky, but we'll continue to see clouds increasing throughout the day today. Temperatures in the region are in the 40s. To start, we'll be climbing into the upper 50s, maybe low 60s in a few spots. Chance for rain showers will pick up after 2 o'clock. Scattered in nature, very light. The heavier rain will hold off until tonight. Before the heavy rain arrives, temperatures today expected to get to 59 in Hoopston and in Onarga. 62 in Bement. We'll be at 57 in Pena. 
and in Hillsboro, 59, the high in Murrayville. And look for a high of 60 in Arcola, 59 in Toledo. Chrisman gets up to 62 later on today. Here's a look at future track across the region. Notice here we are at 2 o'clock. Those clouds have really filled on in, seeing some light rain showers already sneaking on in, very scattered in nature. Heading into the evening hours and tonight, then some areas of heavy rain appear likely. The best odds seem to be north of Interstate 72, probably closer hugging Interstate 74. And we'll see a line of showers and broken thunderstorms swing on through then late tonight into tomorrow morning. That will not bring severe weather. It could bring some heavy rain and rumbles of thunder. Look at this, though. Look how close that is. There may be some wet snowflakes mixing in in northern Illinois late tonight into tomorrow morning. By tomorrow night, then, the rain showers are out. Clouds start to clear out. Sunday night into Monday morning may bring us a chance for some frost in the region. As far as rain totals go here, we may see greater than an inch of rain in most spots here. The best chance seems to be along and north of Interstate 72. We'll talk more about the cooler temperatures heading late this weekend into next week coming up at 843. Jamie. Thanks, Jacob. And Vigo County Sheriff's detectives need your help to find a missing woman. This is 36-year-old Jessica Nassimbane. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. She was last seen in a black Nissan Pathfinder. The car has minor damage on it and has a pink star design on the rear window. If you know anything, contact the Vigo County Sheriff's Office. And depression can be an overwhelming burden to carry, especially when you feel you're carrying it alone. After a difficult year of isolation and stress, many adults are more conscious about mental health challenges. However, less than half say they are very confident they can recognize if a loved one is living with depression. That's according to a new study. WCIA3's Demi Ramirez joins us from the newsroom. Demi, what is this study? Jamie, it's from a study, a new nationwide gene site mental health uh, monitor survey, which found that 83% of those diagnosed with depression say life would be easier if others could understand what they were going through. However, most say they are likely to hear statements that show lack of understanding for what they are experiencing. Less than half say they are very confident they can recognize if a loved one is living with depression. The Depression and Bowler, Bipolar Support Alliance and GeneSight are working together to raise awareness for how depression feels. Since May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Feelings of irritability, distractibility, not being able to accomplish the tasks that you want to accomplish. And while you might not have what you think of a classical sign of depression, in reality, those are depressive symptoms uh, that could be impacting your quality of life. Something someone with depression can try is a genetic test. It may help doctors by providing information about how a patient's genes may affect their outcomes with certain medications used to treat uh, depression, anxiety, and other conditions. Offering support by asking questions like, how can I help? Do you want to talk about it? Are some of the more helpful ways to be there for someone living with depression. We have, um, we have more on depression and treatments, resources available on our website at WCIA.com. In the newsroom, I'm Demi Ramirez, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, thanks, Demi. And it's time for our trending topics of the day. We're talking about free gas, this week's weather, and a viral dog. First up, free gas, two words most drivers can't resist. Nick Cannon and the morning team at Power 106 in L.A. pumped up to 10 free gallons for customers with regular self-serve gas in L.A. County, now averaging more than $4.13 a gallon. Everyone was excited about saving more than $40 at the tank. I love some free gas. In fact, uh, my, my interesting thing is that, you know, some friends in California are telling gas prices here, and they're like, oh, wow, that's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> kind of crazy to think about. But, uh, Those lines are so long. They though, are, yeah. For that so gas. Definitely uh, nice when you can save a quick couple of bucks here. Do you have any tips for finding cheap gas, Jamie? I don't. I just. Yeah, one of the things I, mean, I try and do is go to the, the big box, like the, the discount stores or whatnot, uh, yeah. like Sam's Club, Costco. They've got it cheap, or use the gas app. I'm always looking for cheap gas mm. anywhere. 
I can. Yeah. All right, uh, the next one, we're not actually talking about the weather, Jamie. Look at this. Last weekend, uh, you... You said we were talking about the weather. I know. I decided <laughs> to throw you in for a loop here. Jamie, you got to pet some of the Dicky Chicks last week. If you aren't familiar with the Dicky Chicks and following my Facebook page, they're chickens my parents have. There's five of them. They're cute as can be. Jamie, you liked them, didn't you? I did. These were super nice chickens, I have to say. Um... Yeah, so, know. my grandma had, used to have chickens, and they laid blue eggs, which was so really cool to us. But these chickens weren't like my grandma's chickens. Our gr grandma's chickens were really aggressive and mean. These were like little pets. Yeah, Mama Dickie has done a great job making these chickens as friendly as can be. Dad's done the same. They both work. I mean, you look a little scared right here. Yeah. Can I see, <laughs> let me bring that full screen. I'm going I'm to see Jamie's very scared face there. Uh, and this, then I warmed up to them. Yeah, I those did. chickens were just all about. They think anybody who comes to visit has food for them. They even let you pick them up here. So we've got yeah. Ethel, Lucy, we've got Ruby and Ginger. Uh, those are four of the five names of this chicken. And someone called me the chicken whisperer. I'm not. I'm really not a chicken whisperer. <laughs> so. The, the chickens were just really, really really nice. They yeah. really were. Of course, that was her story last week, and she came up to Gibson City for the 150th. I thought, we got to go by right, yeah. and see the dicky chicks. <laughs> so. All right. In Houston, the Border Collie has racked up more than 100,000 views. Houston's owner posts videos of the pooch doing tricks like walking on his hind legs around the city in Russia. His owner says he only expected a few views on the video that went viral on TikTok in January. He says he hopes sharing Houston's skills will teach people about dog's abilities and how to train them. I love that. That dog very like excited and Isn't look at that. That's really cool. Yeah, that I don't know if I want that dog jumping on my back like that. We, ne next next weekend, <laughs> Jamie, we'll go back to Gibson. We'll try and get the Dicky Chicks to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Look yeah, at yeah. them. That's uh, hopping along and very obedient. I know some of those dogs, um, you know, some of those dogs when they're well trained, they can do some amazing things. Yeah. So pretty neat story. Pretty cool. Sports is up next.
It is 843. We've got some sunshine to start in most parts of central Illinois as expected, but that will not last long. Already watching our next system slowly approaching in our direction here. Some of those clouds making it into areas down by Springfield, Taylorville, down to Effingham will continue to fill on in. These rain showers will then be on the way to central Illinois. That means our weekend forecast, as nice as it is now, it doesn't last here. Rain showers pick up by the afternoon, especially into the overnight hours tonight. Should get some spots into the 60s here. Many of us will stay in the upper 50s. Tomorrow then, rainy and windy out there, Jamie. Definitely a raw, cold day because of the rain, the wind, and temperatures in the 40s, maybe low 50s for highs, Jamie. I think the way to describe tomorrow may be more like a wet sneeze type of day here. That's a really... Uh, Colorful set of ad adjectives to describe it, but certainly by tonight and tomorrow, the weather will not be that fun. We'll talk more about the cooler weather next week at 8.53. <laughs> Wet sneeze. <laughs> Okay. Um, Illinois tennis players are preparing for the season, and some baseball players are hitting the field in Maryland. Marley Weirda has more in this morning's sports shorts. Illinois tennis hasn't lost in the opening round of the NCAA tournament since 1998. Since then, they've made 24 straight appearances, and they hosted DePaul in the first round yesterday. They were fresh off a Big Ten championship, but the Illini will drop the doubles points, which, which puts the Blue Demons ahead 1-0 heading into singles. But Hunter Heck gets the Illini back on track, winning the first match of the day. He's won eight straight matches. And then Noe Cleef, who hasn't lost one since February, secures it for the Illini as they win it 4-2-1. Meanwhile, Illinois baseball across the road in Champaign looking to knock off the Maryland Terrapins, who are the winners of six straight games. The Illini will lead 1-0 heading into the fifth inning, and it's a great defensive play at the bases as Brandon Comia flips it to Cal Hedza. One runner's out, and there's two as Kellen Sarver completes the, the double play to end the inning. It'll also be a great out for outing for Andrew Hoffman, he pitched through seven innings, allowing just three hits to go for a career-high 12 strikeouts. The Illini will add in some insurance in the eighth inning off a wild pitch. Brandon Comia comes across to score, and the Illini close it out at the top of the ninth, winning it 2-0. They'll be back at Illinois Field today for a doubleheader. Let's look at your morning sports. I'm Marley Weirda. We'll send it back to you. Thanks, Marley. More news is next.
is The Morning Show. Senior living facilities suffered during the pandemic. Now they're taking steps to get to a place of normalcy. But some of them won't see much change when the bridge phase starts next week. WCI 3's Jane Kim has more. It's been about three months since all employees and residents at Autumn Fields in Savoy received their second dose of Pfizer. One of those residents is Sylvia Nicholas. They're all very calm about that. There are questions. I mean, everybody has to ask questions, but we are doing fine. We're, we're, we're anticipating our activities to come forth a little more. It's an exciting time after a year of lockdown. But you have to take some course in finding out what you can do to keep going and having a life after, the, after this. Changes started at Autumn Fields once everyone was vaccinated. Now, family members can visit two at a time. It's a big change from last year when family had to drop things off at the door. Everything from toothpaste to groceries. Residents can now also eat in the dining room instead of in their rooms. Another perk of getting vaccinated. They're already coming out for all of their meals. Um, and some of them are, you know, able to go to restaurants. But, I mean, I'm, I'm already seeing the, the upswing. And hopefully they'll even get out more. Nicholas says she's excited to be able to go to the church for the first time in over a year this weekend. We'll have weather up next. City. It's 8.53, time for another check on weather on the threes. Many of us getting some sunshine, but already seeing clouds sneak into parts of central Illinois out there this morning. The winds are calm, too. Been a while since we've seen wind gusts in spots. 
below 5 to 10 miles an hour here. It's been a breezy couple of days here, but that will return as we go into this afternoon. Here we are, Saturday, 9.30, seeing wind gusts of 15 to 30 miles an hour. Some spots maybe a touch higher than that. Overnight tonight into tomorrow, then, those rain showers are in place with breezy winds out there. We may have some wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles an hour late tonight into tomorrow morning, all as that rain showers are falling into the region. The reason being is we've got a low pressure system that's passing right overhead here. Here we are at lunchtime tomorrow. You can see the circulation right here. That's the area of low pressure passing on by. That may allow some spots tomorrow to get to the 60s along Interstate 70. To the north of it, though, keeping things cooler, cloudy, and showery during the day. That's why, Jamie. I called it a wet sneeze here moments ago. The winds come down on Monday out of the north, though, 5 to 15 miles an hour. We'll probably be seeing cooler temperatures last Monday and Tuesday compared to where we should be this time of year. Here's the system sliding on through. Notice the chance for heavy rain, as we've talked about this morning on the morning show. By Monday into Tuesday, high pressure settles on in. That'll dry things off. It'll keep those temperatures a bit cooler, though, as we go uh, fourth here. The next number of days staying below average should be in the upper, upper 60s and low 70s. We finally get there by Friday. We'll have a check at your seven-day forecast coming up at the end of the show. Willard Airport in Savoy is getting some upgrades. There was a groundbreaking ceremony. The project, the runway project, will include new pavement, lighting, underground wiring, and more. It will take more than four months to finish. And it is opening the doors even wider to welcome more flights, more airlines, more passengers into and out of this vital community. The project is expected to cost more than $12 million. The FAA is paying for most of it. And construction will begin this week at the Atkins Golf Club in southeastern Urbana. It's happening at the former Stone Creek course. Upgrades include additional yardage, renovated tee boxes, bunkers and greens, and improved bridges and ponds.
So that's going to be great for that Stone Creek community, I think, to have everything back open again. And uh, we'll be looking for creative marketing ways to, you know, to leverage the brand of the University of Illinois and really uh, make it a special place. The Atkins Club hopes to open the course for limited rounds in spring 2022. And National Nurses Day is over, but some aren't done thanking them. Staff at OSF in Urbana washed nurses' cars yesterday. It was a small way to show appreciation for the big responsibilities nurses take on every day. They give the greatest care and love to our patients. They serve our patients and our communities every day. It's been a very challenging year for nursing, and this is a way for us to give back to them. So if you know a nurse, be sure to thank them. Here's a check out our seven-day forecast. We're seeing some showers by this afternoon into tonight, Jamie. Tomorrow morning, and around the morning show, we may have some rumbles of thunder out there. You'll want to join us back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. right here for more fun weather and news. By Monday, Tuesday, things trending drier, still cooler out there. Another round of light showers possibly Wednesday and Thursday. Definitely not the early to mid-May forecast, Jamie. <laughs> I'm just ready for all the way sunshine, no rain. Right, one day. One day it'll happen, maybe. Have a great weekend.